Hi, this is a Manly uh, Chinook uh, vacuum tube phono preamplifier, and it sounds awesome. I really, really like it. Um, but there are, there is a couple of annoying features. Well, one really annoying feature. The let's see if this will even focus. The power button has an LED in it and it glows a soft blue all the time that it's plugged in. I find that really annoying and uh, a buddy of mine has the same one and he asked about it as well so I took a look at fixing it and it turned out to be really really easy to do. Um, this one has actually already been done but I'm changing the purple face plate out for a black one so I figured I would take a really quick little video and just show what to do. It is super simple. So, if, uh, I don't even know. Let me see if I can zoom in on this. Uh, let's see. Okay. I think that'll do. Um, so this is basically, there's a, let me see here. There's this three-wire ribbon cable that runs from the back to the front. So on the back, there's a little board, power supply board, that has a little tiny transformer and a relay that controls the, the main power. It switches it on, there's fuses on it and everything else. So it has a bridge rectifier on that, and the output of it goes through a capacitor and then the positive of that has two connections that go to the front. So there's three connections that go to the front. One is the ground. One is goes to the front. There's a 220 ohm resistor and the LED, and that is grounded. So anytime it's plugged in, this is getting power. So there's also an, eight, an 81 ohm resistor and the coil for the relay, which is like 120 ohms and that is hooked to the power switch so when it's switched on right it, it just grounds half of the circuit so after looking at that what I decided to do was disconnect the LED from the ground and just connect it to the switch because when it's on they're both tied to ground anyway so there's no difference in the end schematic um, it, operationally it's exactly the same as before and even these two being connected doesn't cause a problem because it's one. It's only one half of a circuit, and they share the same source anyway. So it doesn't make any difference to how it operates. It works fine, um, but it doesn't have the annoying blue glow while it's on or while it's plugged in until you power it on. Let me get the panel off, and then there's just a couple of screws to get to the uh, power switch, and it's. It's, it's cut one trace on the board and add one little tiny jumper wire. It, it just couldn't be really any easier. And it's reversible should you want to do so. You could just undo the jumper wire and jump it back to the ground terminal where it was. So I, I actually contacted Manly um, to see if I could get uh, one without the rack ears and it turns out that they still have the ears. They just don't have the holes, which is okay I'd rather have it a little narrower, but it is what it is um, And it's black instead of purple so put that aside So and I highly suggest You know don't poke around in this unless you know what you're doing um, even though this is designed for user serviceable tubes you know, check to make sure it's discharged. So I last time I had this apart, I checked, right, and I put a put my meter on the ground, check the B plus, no problem, 0 0.3 volts, it's all discharges, except for these two uh, output capacitors. This hasn't been on for a week. Right now there is 121 volts on that one. And there's 117 volts on that one. And those are like 30 microfarads, I think. 20 or 30. Either way, enough to completely give you a hell of a jolt. So, 
if you own one of these and you're changing the tubes, be really sure you don't touch that, or better yet, use some kind of discharger and discharge the caps, which I'm going to do right now. Okay, now they're safe. Um, let's double check, but they should be fine, and I don't care if this is backwards. Uh, and now it's reading 0.2 volts and 0.25, so completely safe now. Just a word to the wise, and obviously if you change your unit, you're probably almost certainly voiding the warranty. So this one I bought used, it's eight years old, it's way out of warranty, so it doesn't matter. Plus, you know, I was very careful about what I did, and like I said, it is it's not invisibly reversible, but it operationally it totally is. So let me so you just take these there's two little screws here on the front, and then you can just kind of fish around and do the little ribbon cable and it comes out. So let me zoom you in as if I can and show you what we have here. I think that shows up. So, yeah, it does. Well, where's it? There it is. So this, this is the 220 ohm resistor for the LED. That is the LED. So you can see here, maybe, <laughs> if it shows up, um, some scrape marks on the board. This is where I cut the trace. So this side of the LED was connected to the ground right here. This is the other side of the switch. So when the switch is pushed, it connects this to ground. So I just cut this trace and put a little tiny wire between these two pins. That's it. That's all that is necessary. Um, and it's fine. It works great. No problems. Um, so like I said, if, if you wanted to reverse this, you could just pop that little wire off, solder it back to those two, and it would work just like it did originally. So let me put this back together. And of course these ribbons are keyed, you can only get them in one way, so super not a big deal. couple of Phillips screws going into the standoffs. That's it. They wrote A++ on my faceplate. I, uh, I don't know whether it is, but it does look really good. Uh, so, here's its new faceplate. And uh, so we'll just like basically just four screws to put it on. Same four that it came off with, right? So. And contacting Manly about the faceplate, they were just as nice as could be. Really helpful. A little expensive. Uh, and I said, I wish it was narrower. And, uh, I didn't. I was a little disappointed when I opened it because I didn't pay enough uh, I didn't pay enough attention to the pictures online, which clearly show it just like this. So. Still, it'll look nicer than what I had. I just, my rack's a little narrow upstairs, and I wanted it to, I wanted that little extra clearance. I might take the old one and machine it 
and a friend of mine uh, can do powder coating so I might do that and have it powder coated black and then I can have two of them um, so that's it on the faceplate just and the, the cage just goes on there's eight screws and it's oh, it would be good as new except for without the annoying blue glow when it's plugged in but not turned on um, the uh, LEDs so there's two white LEDs behind the logo um, and those come on dimly when you power it on and then when the uh, it has a time delay when that engages after 20 or 30 seconds uh, they actually become a little bit brighter and it looks really nice um, I just really didn't like having the blue LED glowing all the time Plus, of course, it'll last a little longer. Not that LEDs tend to go out very fast, but you know, no reason, no reason for it, in my opinion. So, and I, I can say that in my system, this thing's just quiet, especially for being all vacuum tube. Uh, it's a vacuum tube, you know, gain stage, and I'm running on a moving magnet with 45 dB of gain, which is a lot. I mean, it's not. You know as much as a moving foil but in the overall scheme of things it's a lot of gain and it's quiet I can turn my my system up all the way it doesn't hum there's a tiny tiny bit of, of tube hiss but it's overall really quiet and it sounds really good um, so uh, that's all I got today um, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later see ya